for most people who grow their own food, potatoes are one of those crops that always ends up in the backyard garden. But these plants can take up huge amounts of room. But it doesn't have to be that way. In this video, I'm going to show you how I grew 235 pounds of potatoes in just 200 square feet and without water. I'm Tony O'Neill and this is Simplified Gardening where I show you how to garden in a simpler way. If you want that perfect garden to relax in or just want to grow your own nutrient dense foods then start now by clicking the subscribe button and the bell icon. Then click all to be notified each time I release new content just like this. This is where I've sown my potatoes this year and as you can see it's a small space but it's allowed me to sow 48 containers of potatoes this year containing five varieties. Now because some of these are determinate and indeterminate varieties, the full potential of this space hasn't been achieved. And there is some other factors that take in consideration before I harvest these potatoes because these potatoes have had no watering from me at all due to ill health. They've had to fend for themselves and the only supply of water they've had is natural rainfall. Taking this into consideration, I don't expect a full crop here. In fact, I'll be surprised if I get any crop at all. Obviously, I'm not gonna show you me harvesting all 48 containers of these potatoes. So what I will do is harvest one and show you what we're likely to expect. And then I will speed up the footage of me harvesting the rest. And while that video is playing, I will give you some tips so that you can get the best out of your small area of potatoes. Okay, so let's have a look what we got here. So the first one, was sown on the 2nd of April 2020. And do you know what? I don't even know what this variety is until I dig into it. Normally I've written on them, so I don't know why there's no name on this. As you can see, this is quite wet. Some nice spuds here, really. Bear in mind that these have not had any water from me at all. Only what has rained. There's a lot of small potatoes in here as well, mind. These are Sarpo Mira. So I don't know why I didn't put that on the thing, but there's the seed potato there. Let's uh, pull all that out. We'll stick that down by here on the floor. I'm relatively pleased with these considering they could have been bigger. But um, I wasn't expecting anything to be honest with you. Now, I will be talking about everything that I've done here over the next part of this video. But um, I just want to harvest this one first, just so we get an idea of what to expect. Maybe they won't all be like this, maybe they will, I'm not sure. But they're still giving, which is good. And as you can see, this is still pretty wet, but we did have a good downpour yesterday. In fact, we had a big storm and some of you may have seen state on my green houses. I think that's it in here. Okay, so let's get this bucket in. So there we are, guys. That's what we can expect out of each of the buckets. To be honest with you, I'm relatively pleased over that. Um, considering I haven't been here due to being ill. So what we'll do now is we'll get on with 
harvesting all these buckets and I'm going to pass on some information to you as I'm doing it and we'll speed up the, the footage um, and we'll talk about how we were able to get these even though they have never been watered by me since the day of planting and uh, hopefully it'll, it'll help you. Now, as I harvest the rest, I'm going to give you some tips on growing potatoes in such a small area like this. Number one, you want to aim for a container size that's approximately 30 litres or 8 to 10 US gallons in size. I've tested larger and smaller containers over the years and 30 litres gives the best results. The reason for this is because it holds enough medium and gives enough space for the potatoes to spread and grow to a decent size while not costing a fortune in compost and feed. The larger the size you go, the diminishing results you get and this is similar with smaller 10 litre flour containers that are used a lot. Number two, the amount of seed potatoes you plant in a container will depend on whether the variety of potato is indeterminate or determinate. Determinate potatoes grow on a single level, so if you plant two seed potatoes in the lower third, the upper two thirds of the container are not utilised by the potatoes. This allows the gardener to sow a second level and to maximise the crop and use the available compost. These potatoes usually grow quite small in size. Due to this fact, the medium in the container is able to support four plants. Indeterminate potatoes, on the other hand, grow on multiple levels up their stem. So if you plant two seed potatoes in the bottom third of the container, these seeds will produce tubers throughout all levels of the compost. Indeterminate potatoes also grow much larger than their determinate counterparts. Therefore, the medium in the container is unable to support more than two plants. When sowing determinate potatoes, you can use up to four seed potatoes in these containers. When sowing indeterminate potatoes, you should only provide two seed potatoes in the container. Tip number three. When growing potatoes, chitting them allows you to decide whether you want to grow small potatoes or large potatoes. To grow smaller potatoes, simply allow all shoots on the potato to grow. This will produce more tubers overall, but they will be much smaller in size. If you would prefer larger potatoes for jacket spuds or fries, then reduce the chits or sprouts on the potatoes to just two sprouts. This will produce fewer potatoes, but they will grow much larger in size. Tip number four, when sowing the potatoes, it's not necessary to just cover the tops of the potatoes, then come back when they've grown through to earth up further. This is the traditional way of growing in the field or in trench methods. It was done to prevent the tubers pushing through the surface and spoiling when the sun turned them green. You're much better to completely fill the container with your chosen medium to within half an inch of the tops of the container. Number five, placing the containers is important. As a rule, you need to be in an area that has eight to 10 hours of sunlight, not too windy and near a water source. Bury the containers about a fifth of their depth in the soil or do what I've done here by placing them in the soil and surrounding them in wood chips. This helps them to keep the root area cooler and absorbs any water and feed that escapes out of the holes in the bottom. This can then be reabsorbed by the container should it be required by the wicking process. Tip number six. Now the containers are in place, we need to prevent them from losing water to evaporation. To do this, we use a mulch. I'm a big fan of rapeseed straw. This comes from the equestrian or farm store. It is used as animal bedding. Simply place a good layer on top of the container. Do not be afraid to push this down as it will be able to pass water from the straw to the soil much better. Tip number seven. The potatoes are now all planted and in their location where we want them to grow. They are mulched on the top and at the base to reduce water loss. Is there anything else we can do to help? Yes. There are two more things we could do to ensure we make our lives easier and get better crops. The first of those is a support system for the foliage or tops of the plant. If you've ever grown potatoes before in a container, you will know the challenges of the growing tops of the plants. They sprawl all over the place, especially if we have a storm. This is counterproductive for us as gardeners though. We have to fight our way through them as in a small space like this, they will flop over the pathway. A way I tested this year is to support the growing tops was to use a suspended cattle fencing on some cut sticks in the ground approximately 18 inches above the buckets. This gives the potatoes a 4 inch hole to grow through but due to its structure holds the entire crop upright as a single unit so each plant is supporting the next. 
This year we've had some major storms and this worked brilliantly. If I'd been here watering the potatoes it would have made my life much easier as they were up and out of my way. But it has another benefit to us gardeners. Because the tops are stood upright, it shields the tops of the buckets from the hot sun at the height of summer. This keeps them cool and acts like a tree canopy protecting the tubers. The last thing we need to consider is watering and feeding. So let's take a look at watering first. We place the potatoes next to a good water source. It's always better to use rainwater if possible, but if not, city water is fine. But even being close, watering this many containers will take a fair while to water for good crops. Consider adding an automated watering system. I had started to do this this year, but never got around to finishing it before I went ill. Feeding a basic potato feed or blood meal, bone meal or fish meal can be added at the time of planting. Where I live, we can buy blood, fish and bone as one product. For really good crops, a high potassium and potash feed should be used. This will aid tuber formation. We can use a product like seaweed or comfrey or compost teas. Be aware that chicken manure pellets should be used very sparingly. These are high in nitrogen and will provide you beautiful luscious green top growth at the cost of tuber formation. How do you know when you're ready to harvest your potatoes? You may hear people saying you can harvest at flowering time or when certain amount of weeks have passed. If the potatoes are still green, allow them to continue to grow. This is when they are packing on their weight. You should consider harvesting when more than 50% of the leaves have turned yellow. Cut off all the holms and allow them two weeks sat in the ground to harden their skins. A note on flowering, many gardeners swear by waiting until the flowers have produced a seed pod. If you want good potatoes, when you see them start to flower, you should remove them. The act of flowering a subsequently seed pod producing uses up tons of energy that could otherwise be put into tuber formation if the plants did not need to support the flowers and seed pods. By doing these things you will give your plants the very best chance. As I've stated in the beginning of this video, these have had no input from me after planting due to becoming ill. These are all the potatoes harvested that were in the 48 containers. And the varieties we got, these white ones here are Mafona. These are Rudolph, Sapo Mira, another bucket of Rudolph. We have some Charlotte, another bucket of Sapo Mira, a little bit of a bucket of Rudolph, and we have some Kestrel as well. So that's the five varieties. What we'll do now, I've brought the scales up and we will weigh and see what we had. I, I've got to say there's been uh, some good sized potatoes, but there's been a lot of these very small ones as well. And I put that down to the fact that uh, initially when these were planted, they didn't get the moisture that they needed in a really warm heat. So um, I, su I suspect a lot of this crop has come on later in the year and they haven't had time to sort of grow before they uh, went over. But that's fine, we'll have a look what we've got now out of just this small little space. So the first thing I'm gonna do is put an empty bucket on and I'm gonna tear it out. So we're at zero now. Okay, so let's weigh these my phone at first. Okay, so this is the Mafona. Due to the um, the camera rate, um, I'm not able to take a photograph of that. It keeps flashing, but it's 18.875 kilos. The first bucket of Rudolph is 15.65. Let's do all of them first then. Second bucket of Rudolph is 16.45. The last bucket of Rudolph is 5.95. So we're now going to the Sapo Mira. And that is 18.85. And another one. 
This one is 16.67. We've got a few Charlotte here, which are a second early, and that's 6.36. And last but not least, the Kestrel, which is 7.65. So we'll get a measurement and I'll convert that into pounds as well, guys. Well, guys, excuse the sun, it's just come out. There we have it. I've added it all up and it's a total of 106.45 kilos, which equates to 235 pounds of potatoes. So by doing all of the things that I've suggested throughout this video, um, you really give your potatoes a chance. And as you've already know, I've had no input in these potatoes from day one since they were planted. They've had to fend for themselves. Now, there's a lot of small potatoes in here and some that are okay. But like I said, I think this is just down to the very fact that it was so hot in the beginning of the year and I wasn't here watering them so they didn't have a chance to put any weight on. And then it's only been the last end of the year where we've had the rain that it's managed to put this crop there. But all in all, I'm relatively pleased because I wasn't expecting anything as, like I said, they've had no input. But it just goes to show that getting those containers right um, is a massive thing. You know, putting the straw on the top holds that moisture in. This bark chip that's on the floor, look at it, it's damp. It holds the moisture and then wicks it back into there. We got. 235 pound of spuds and I've done nothing. Um, that cattle wire, they worked an absolute treat. It kept all the tops up and it was easy to pull the buckets from underneath there. i will be doing that every year on all of them. As you can see on this side, I didn't do it on that side, I did because it was a test. And all in all, I think the potatoes were better on that side. But as you can see, I can practically touch both these posts here. It's just this little space that I've grown all of these potatoes in. You couldn't do this in the ground. There's no dig, no issue, no stress, and more importantly, no watering. And look at what I had out of it. If nothing else, this goes to prove that um, mulching your containers is paramount when it comes to producing tubers for, uh, you know, to eat. And it's only because of these growing methods that I got any crop at all. So it is really worth you taking a look at and trying. And I know there have been various other YouTubers who have tried this method and had great success too. If you got value from this video, you can subscribe here. And when you've done that, if you want to know more about growing potatoes, I have a real in-depth video right here, which covers all of the different growing methods that are available to you and which is best. I'm Tony O'Neill, this is Simplified Gardening where I show you how to garden in a simpler way. Remember folks, you reap what you sow. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.